if you have the lecture notes, right? Okay. Good. So then I'll start. Okay. Okay, thank you for your patience. I think we can start. Make sure that there's not too much noise outside. Okay, so we will do, we'll continue talking about evolution of quantum states. And we're still in this very easy case called uniform dynamics. That's when the Hamiltonian doesn't change in time. And today we're going to see a little bit more of what kind of things we can compute. We'll see how to evolve any state, how to evolve, uh, I'll see how things like the average position changes. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit for the first time about conserved quantities and also what happens when you have multiple systems. Okay. So today I think is kind of a nice lecture. So let's just recap what we did last time and all the lecture notes for today are online. So last time, again, we recap there was Schrodinger's equation. And this is the general case, was that if you want to see how the state evolves in time, its derivative depends on the Hamiltonian times some constant. Okay. And then we looked at this uniform dynamics, which was the case when h of t doesn't change. And everything we'll do will be in this case now. Okay. So what did we see in the very last time we saw? Well, we can, the Hamiltonian is a Hermitian matrix matrix, so in particular, it can be analyzed. And we said, well, we just call, these are the eigenstates, we call them the energy eigenstates. This thing represents the kind of energy configuration of your system, and, and these are the energy um, eigenvalues, which we expressed also dk as h bar times some WK because these were related to the eigenvalues of the unitary. So that was the other thing we saw, which is how this, how is our U of T? In this case, we did this long derivation on Thursday. In the case of C a pattern is that on Thursday, I try to put the more uh, boring long derivations because it's only one hour. And Tuesday is a bit more examples and pedagogic maybe. And we saw we can express this as e minus i h bar e k time. And they share the same eigenbasis, right? Okay. And then, of course, you can express this e k like this to get rid of the h bar if you want. Good. And then we look at some specific states. We look at what happens to the evolution of these eigenstates? So this is what we call the stationary states, because they, nothing much happens to them. So they just get a phase when they evolve. Uh, so if the initial state is again, this is the energy eigenbasis, so the uh, the eigenbasis of the Hamiltonian, then. They evolve just by putting this unitary next to them. And because of this inner product that appears here, only when the case is the same, it survives. Uh, so U of T, K. So we get K again, and we just get a number here that is just a phase. Uh, K over H bar. And then we saw that for these states, you can derive oh, 
a time independent version of the Schrodinger equation. So we just plug those states here. We did some maths and we found this. Schrodinger equation, that's what SE is. And that was this. I mean, essentially, you just see that they are eigenvalues of eigenstates of the Hamiltonians when you plug it in, particularly at this. Uh, okay. And why is this helpful? You can see, well, okay, let me do this first. If you try to see how a quantum system evolves in time, with high likelihood, it won't be exactly in one of these states, right? So you could see that it's a bit useless to know how these states evolve. But the thing is that these states form a complete basis for the, for the Hilbert space. So you can actually expand any state in this basis, and then you just need to, um, to see how the individual uh, components evolve, and then everything is linear. We'll see how to do this now. So using just this, we can see how a general state evolves. Let's see. Of any state. Replace any with arbitrary state. So, and that's the beauty of vector spaces. So this case form a basis. So then we can expand any state in this basis. Okay. So some alpha k, let me keep the same notation, yeah. Okay, right? So then if I want to evolve, here I did nothing, right? We did this a few times and we'll see an example later. Uh, so if I want to evolve this state, well, is this applied to the state? And here's why, you know, people don't believe me when I say quantum physics is easy. Math. Oh, come on. No. The math is actually very easy because everything is linear, right? So this unitary does not depend on k, it can just come inside. This alpha is just a number, a complex number. U of t. K. But this we know how to how to evolve, so you get k, alpha k, and now this e i h bar e k t. And it's as easy as that. Um, the hard part often is for a given physical system, even if you know how local interactions work, is to find like what the global Hamiltonian is and then to diagonalize it, right? If you've done any kind of programming with matrices, you know that finding, like diagonalizing a matrix, finding its eigenstates is actually very hard computationally. Um, and, and indeed, like the, the hard part of most quantum mechanics calculations is gonna be to find what the global Hamiltonian is and diagonalize it. Once you diagonalize it, you can evolve a state very easily like this. Once you know all the eigenstates and all the eigenvalues, there you go. Okay, we look at an example. And you will repeat this example in the tutorial with one caveat. And this is the last time I think for a while, well, today might be the last day for a while that we talk about qubits. So on Thursday, we start talking about continuous systems. So, but the qubit is enough to get an idea. So let's say the Hamiltonian is gonna be given by some real constant times the poly X operator. Uh, which if you remember, it's this matrix, which 
So look, this is the eigenbasis of the matrix. This is sets plus and minus uh, with eigenvalues one and minus one. Right? And now it has eigenvalues B and minus B. Uh, and this is not unphysical Hamiltonian. It looks like a very simple to example, but if you think for an example would be an electron, it has a spin and you put it in the magnetic field that is somehow in the horizontal direction, in the X direction, then the Hamiltonian that the, the spin, that the electron spin fills is it's similar to this. Okay, if those words don't mean anything to you, don't worry about it, we'll, we'll look at it later. So we just express this again in its energy uh, eigenbasis. So we just do, well, this is B plus plus minus B. So plus minus is gonna be the energy eigenbasis. And I did this on purpose so because we are too used to take the zero one basis as a default. And this shows us that, okay, we need to take, this is gonna be our case there. So what is U of T? This is E to minus I H T H bar which is e to minus i t b h bar, the poly x operator. Okay. So far, so good? We're just applying those things directly. Let's just find again the stationary states. These are just the energy eigenstates, so they're going to be plus and minus. So we just apply like this operation here, this equation there. Uh, so it's just the uh, eigenvalues. Oh, sorry, the yeah, eigenstate of the equation. So it's this state and that state. Right. So these are the stationary states. So these are the two eigenvalues. This is, can be, you can call it H1 or H, let's call it H minus. And this you can call it H plus. These are our energy eigenvalues. Good, which means that they evolve how? Uh, let's do it here. U of T plus evolves to E minus I T over H bar times this eigenvalue. That's the phase. U of T minus E. The same with the minus sign, so the minus cancel each other. There you go. Yes. So now let's, this is just a stationary state, so now we take any other initial state. So we want to evolve an arbitrary state like we saw up there. Okay, so we take a state. Um, now let's suppose it's the zero state, right? And we want to see how it evolves. I mean, we could apply this, that differential equation, but that's a lot more work than just applying this, this linear expansion, right? So let's just express it in the plus minus basis. And I think you did this in the tutorial. Uh, so this is our side here. Yeah. Well, did you do this in the tutorial? How to express zero in terms of plus and minus? Yes, you saw this before. Yeah, okay. Good, so if we did this, then we know that at some time t, well, this is gonna be the evolution of this state, which is that e to minus i to b 
Oh, bridge bar. Plus. Plus. E to right T B. Oh, bridge bar. Minus. Over square root of two. Okay. So, so far we just apply this directly. No, that's just mathematics. It's not telling us much about the physics yet. So to be able to see through the, through the formal and see what's actually happening, we need to kind of massage it a bit. And one trick we use uh, very commonly is like, there's two phases there. And we're just gonna plug one out to be a global phase. And then we have only one little phase inside. I'll show you what this, uh, what this means. If there's questions, now's a good time. Okay. Yes. The zero state is not a stationary state. Uh, sorry, the zero state is our initial state. Yeah, this is. It could be anything. I, like I want to know. I mean, no. Okay, wait. Uh, it's like I prepare an electron in the zero state, and now I put it in the in the magnetic field, and I want to see how it evolves. It's an example. It's part of more specificity of the example. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 I, I mean, everything is determined by the Hamiltonian, right? First, you get the Hamiltonian. You diagonalize it, you find the eigenvectors in the case. You know, maybe it's more useful if you if you think of it as uh, if you if you draw it like this, if you call them E case to keep reminding yourself that it's not any basis, but it's the energy basis. It's just more annoying to write all the time. But yes, like the, the case are not a choice. The choice ended when we chose the Hamiltonian, right? And that's given just by the physical system and we can you know, manipulate it, tune in the magnetic field higher or lower, but, or direction, but then it gives us the Hamiltonian from there. We found the energy eigenbases and those are the case. Yeah. Okay, so we are there. And now in principle, we have this, and you know, you could plug it into Mathematica or any other, sorry, physicists like Mathematica sometimes, um, but plug it into any computer and just ask to give you like the, the evolution of the state. But there's some analytical ways to see what's going on. So let's do this. I'll just rewrite here what we have there. So we have one over square root of two. And then we have E minus I B T over H bar. Okay. And we have two complex numbers here and it's hard to keep track of the relation. So what we always do, and you'll see in a bit why this is useful, is to, we take one of them out. Okay, so we multiply everything by E to minus I B T square of two, which leave us here with just one. Uh, and here to make it work out, you need to add a two. Does that make sense? Uh, 
Uh, sorry, no, plus two. No, plus two, yes. Right, because plus two times minus one is one. Yes, that works. Okay, so now what we have here, let's just call these things. So this number down here is just a normalization of the state. This is the global phase. It's multiplying the whole state, so we know that it won't matter for local measurements. We still keep track of it. Um, so you see some, some things that happen, but you know that for local measurements, at least it won't, it won't matter. Uh, and now this here is what people call the relative phase. And it just means like when we expand a state in a basis, what's, what's the coefficient of one relative to the other? And so, now I can give you a spoiler of what this, this Hamiltonian is actually doing. Uh, this is the block sphere, so we start with the state uh, zero here. And what this does is kind of corresponds to a rotation around the x axis. And this rotation is faster or slower depending on the b, and depending on the sign of b, it also goes uh, uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. So if it's rotating around, suppose that this is the x-axis. If it's rotating around there, then it, eventually this state is going to do, 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 and come down here to one. Okay. So I'll show you, uh, let's find this. So let's, we find some time t prime such that, So I have t prime, it's gonna be one. Okay. So what is one? If you expand one, so to get anywhere, you always need to expand in the energy eigenbasis. And in the x basis, one can be expressed like this. Yeah. Uh, so then what we need is for this coefficient here, to be minus one, right? In fact, let's just say that this must be proportional because we don't know what the global phase is and we don't care for now. So we need this thing to be minus one. And this, we don't matter, we don't care about what happens to it because it's a global phase. So we need that uh, e to two i b t over h bar, we want this to be minus one. And what is minus one? If you look at the complex plane, that's not the block sphere, this is the complex plane. We have uh, one minus one i minus i. Then the angle we need here is pi. So that's e to i pi. Plus some some constant times two pi, right? But let's find the smallest possible. So then we need that uh, pi equals two b t over h bar t prime. So t prime is pi h bar over two b. So then let's see what the state is in this case. So we want to find the state at time t prime. And let's just write what t prime is again. This. So we just plug it in in this one. So we have one over square root of two times the phase, which is minus i b h bar times the time i h bar to b. And now here's the state. 
I do b of h bar times this thing. Okay. But this, we already worked out that this is e to the i pi, and that's just minus one. And here on this side, we cancel out some things. So you get one over square root of two. Oh, let, let me keep this for later. So we have e to minus i pi over two. And then we have plus minus minus over square root of two. And that's the state that we wanted, right? Uh, what is this number? That phase is like coming here, so minus pi over two, so it's minus i. Okay, so minus i, this is the global phase. One. Okay. So, what we found out is that after this time, after this time here, our state evolved, it came down, 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 and it's now in state one with some phase. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there should be an H here somewhere. Yes. Yes, you're right. Is there also a type on the notes? No, the notes are okay. Yeah. Yes, the notes are okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes? Here? Two? Well, that's a two. And what is the symbol between the psi t prime and that the uh, state one? Ah, this is this thing that, yeah, people are also asking proportional to. <laughs> so in LaTeX is prop, I think, or prop two, I don't know. Uh, because because it can have the phase, right? That's what we worked out. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's like an alpha, but then it has like longer kind of legs. Yes, and this is just a two. Okay. So one question would be, well, what happens then? If you took this time t prime to get here, what happens if you give it time two t prime? Probably goes back to the initial stage. And the answer is yes, but it gets a global phase. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Oh. This is something else where quantum mechanics is different from classical mechanics. Like, classically, if I have a ball and I rotate it by two pi in one direction, I end up with the initial state, right? If I have the North Pole here, rotate it by uh, pi, the North Pole is in the South, I rotate it again, the North Pole is on top, right? So back to the initial state. And then the quantum case, you get an initial state times a phase, as we'll see, which doesn't matter if you only have one system that we care about, but once we have like many entangled systems, then it's not exactly the same and we will not see examples of this for a long while. 
So I'll just show, so what about, this, so now we have double as much time, so we just get rid of that, of that two factor there, and we'll just replace it directly here to see what we get. So here we have E to minus I B over H bar. H bar over B. Yeah. And here we have plus, plus E to Y to B H bar times the time. Minus. And this thing is these things cancel out. So it's I to two pi, sorry, E to I two pi, and that's one. But on this side, uh, well, you don't have the factor of two. So you get here E to minus I pi, which is minus one. So then you get minus, one plus plus minus over square root of two, which is minus our initial state. Yeah. So you get the initial state, but you get a global phase, doesn't matter for local measurements, it's again on the top of the block sphere, which shows that you know the block sphere is not a, a total representation of the quantum state. We saw that. We told you from the beginning that it ignores the global phase. Okay, so after two pi, we are up there again. Uh, sorry, after two t prime, we're up there again. So I will not do it here explicitly. You have it in the lecture notes, but it turns out that you need to do another full round, which makes sense to get like here a factor of two, so that then in the end you get it here a factor of two, and here you get on again. So I'll make the summary. If phi of zero equals zero, phi of t prime, this is, we saw it was minus i times one, phi of two t prime, we just saw now this is minus zero. And then if you did finally 40 prime, now we're back to the initial state again, then we get really zero. So for any other state, you just, you know, for any other time tau, you just remove, uh, so phi of some time tau is the same as tau, plus for, uh, what's the number, L? Right. The system has this recurrence, right? After four T prime and any number of this, it goes back to the initial state. So if you want to know how it works at minute 300, you just, you just see how many times uh, you can fit this, you remove that and Get the same time. Does that make sense? Yes? Right, like a, so it, it, it works a bit like a clock, right? If I know, if I wanna know the, the time, if I wanna know what shows in, in the clock tomorrow at this time, well, I know that it has a cycle of 12 hours, so I can remove that. And the cycle here is for 40 prime. Okay. So this kind of shows us the basics of it. What time is it? Uh, we still have a few minutes. Okay, so then I'll just do, before we go to another, to another topic, we just look at what happens if you have several systems. Okay. 
So suppose now that I have different systems. So I have here some system A and some system B there. Okay. And I want to write, and they might have some global Hamiltonian. And in, in general, one can write this global Hamiltonian as something that acts only on A, plus something that acts only on B, plus something that acts on the two. Right? So we try to split it like this because it's, it's useful for many physical systems. So we say, this is a local Hamiltonian that acts, not, acts only on, on A, does nothing on B. This is a local Hamiltonian that acts only on B. And whatever is left, this is the interaction. One example is, for example, if you have a crystal of some kind and you have lattices like this, and you only have kind of each atom in a lattice only fills the, the nearest one, so you only have kind of local interactions, but you can build up the global Hamiltonian just from these local interactions. Yeah. Uh, so these are local. Hamiltonians. Uh, and so we'll just show here what happens in the easiest case, which is when there's no interaction, okay? When this is zero. So, uh, boom, 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 boom. And I'll give you a hint of what happens if, if this is small than the other two. So non-interacting systems. That's when H interaction is zero. Yeah. And in this case, we'll see. That the possible is like, I mean, suppose I have a qubit evolving according to this Hamiltonian, I have another qubit evolving according to something else. They have nothing in common. My one could be here and the other one in the moon. The only thing they have in common is that I decided to represent them as a tensor product. Uh, so the evolution better be independent. And that's kind of what uh, we'll show. So I'll just show you in a circuit and then we can prove it after the break. So the idea is going to be that if you want to see, well, here I'm a, I start with some state in A and B, so that's A, that's B, they will evolve according to the joint unitary determined by that Hamiltonian, and the idea is that the, in this case, this is the same as just having one for you A and one for you B, and this would be kind of the circuit. So it's an independent circuit. Okay, so after the break, we will prove this. So maybe I let you go now and we come back at, uh, I can give you the full break. We can come back at doo -doo -doo, quarter past. Yeah, and then we show this. Okay. Um, happy to take questions. Thank mm -hmm. you. 